What's going on everybody? It's Sid from Rock and Roll True Stories. And it's that time of the year again where I go through my favorite videos and topics that I've done and I've linked all of them down below. And these aren't necessarily my most popular videos, but they were just topics that I really enjoyed doing. A lot of them came from you guys as subscribers who've submitted ideas through the request form or put comments uh, on my videos as well. So, uh, my, so one of my favorite videos I did this year was on the British band The Verve. I had previously done a video on their whole beef between themselves and the Rolling Stones over the song Bittersweet Symphony. And uh, this video was about 20 some minutes long. It kind of set the stage for the rest of the year where I was doing longer videos. And uh, yeah, The Verve was a band that I learned a lot about doing uh, this story. I found a treasure trove of articles from back in the 90s when they were blowing up and even around the time of their first or second album. So I was able to put some good information together for that. This next video was, I think, my longest or one of the longest videos I've ever done, which was the history of Linkin Park, a band that I listened to a lot in college. And I honestly hadn't listened to them in a very long time. So it was cool to go back and uh, listen to their albums again and uh, put together what I thought was one of the best stories I've done, um, starting from the early days all the way until you know the band um, ended in 2017 following Chester's death. Another band that was very indicative of, of my childhood was uh, Matchbox 20. We did a whole history on that band. And um, uh, one of the most fascinating parts of that whole story was uh, was actually Rob Thomas's childhood. We actually did quite a few Matchbox 20 videos this year. We did also a video on his collaboration with Carlos Santana for the song Smooth, which has also been a pretty popular video. And the song was inescapable in 1999 in the summer. Uh, my next video was uh, a band that I had a ton of requests for. I I feel like I could do a much better video if I did it today. And who knows, maybe someday down the road, I'll do like an hour and a half long video on this band. But this was my, I think my second longest video, which was Jane's Addiction and the whole history of that group. And then I also did a video about Dave Navarro's mother who was actually murdered. I didn't hear about the story until he was on Howard Stern show and he talked a little bit about it, but I wanted to know more about the but the back history of it. Um, while we're on the topic of like true crimes and those kinds of things, another one I did this year, which was a request by you guys, was the murder of Vinnie Vincent of Kiss fame's ex-wife. A story that a lot of people hadn't heard before, and uh, it was a reasonably popular video, you know, when it came out. Uh, another one was a story that I was planning on doing for a very long time. Then I finally got in the right headspace to write it and do it, and it was about a 30 minute long video on Metallica's fight with Napster. I think there was a lot of things in there that you know even myself who used Napster and followed the whole thing back in the day didn't know about until I was assembling the story and finding some of that old footage of the news clips them talking about the whole legal battle was was a trip down memory lane for sure. Uh, the next one is another story that I think one of you guys suggested. It was um, one of my more popular videos this year which was Tom Waits's a lawsuit with Doritos, uh, the, the the chip company, and how they tried to use a sound, how they tried to basically um, do a parody of his voice for one of their commercials. I think it was back in the late '80s, early '90s, and a lawsuit ensued. And it's a it's another fascinating tale. And I always like coming across these kinds of stories. This next one is very similar to I'd done a couple of videos on Corn over the last year or two. I will be doing a full story on Corn's history, but it's one of those things where. It takes a long time to write those full hist band histories because the amount of time it takes to research it, put together is somewhat of a cohesive story that sounds good and I'm really proud of. That doesn't unfortunately happen overnight. And this one was about the time Corin threatened to school. I think it was a high school or a junior high um, in the States. There was some kid who wore a corn shirt to, to school. I think he got expelled. Again, I wrote this a very long time ago, so it's very hard to remember the exact details, but um, and Corrin threatened a lawsuit against the school, and it was a story that was in the national press at the time. I think it was around the time of like the late 90s when the story broke. Um, another one, which was a story that was quite different than what I typically do, was about the Jock Jam CD, uh, the Jock Jam CDs, I should say. Um, these were albums that came out in the late 90s, and I think there was maybe one in the early 2000s. If you played sports at all, like I play basketball, and I mean, they played jock jams at like games, at practice. It was just about how the whole thing happened and how it started and how it became big business for a record label that was typically associated with hip hop music. Uh, another two stories were about um, more female centric bands. Uh, Luscious Jackson was a band that I covered that was pretty popular. People seemed to enjoy it. It's a band I've, I've always heard Naked Eye on Sirius XM on Lithium. 
and uh, I remember their song being Rock Band as well as I think it was DLC was released as. And I want I personally a lot of these stories are just stories that I wanted to know more about. And again, I found a treasure trove of articles of uh, um, of the history of the group back when they were popular in the 90s. And then another same story with this other band, Lush, which I had become exposed to through Rock Band 2. They had a non-disc track, and I don't know if they had any DLC put out, but that was another video that seemed to be pretty popular. And that one clocked in at like 26 minutes, and people seemed to enjoy it. So you're probably going to be seeing more British bands uh, this coming year. In 2024 there's gonna be more 80s acts coming there's gonna be more punk rock there's gonna be a lot of acts that I've never talked about that you you guys have requested so trust me I'm looking at the request form like on a weekly basis uh, another story that was requested by several people and was one of my more popular videos of the year was the murder of mountain bassist Felix Papillardi which um, he's got a whole fascinating backstory even aside from you know his death about working with mountain and cream and he worked with Dead Boys, who will have a video coming out in a couple weeks here. Uh, another two videos which were really nostalgic was Headbangers Ball. We did a whole history on Headbangers Ball and how it got started and the shows that kind of predated it, as well as 120 Minutes, which a lot of people requested. I'm really proud of that video. That was a, a really fun topic to get into and hear about the, the show The Cutting Edge, which was kind of like led into 120 Minutes. It was like the first alternative show on MTV. And then uh, a couple more videos I was really happy about was Little Affair. If you guys remember that 90s festival, it was like the all-girl festival that actually had a lot of engagement. People had strong opinions on it. Um, another topic that came out around the same time was a band that was inescapable during the 90s, which was Hootie and the Blowfish. Uh, the same week, I think I dropped Stone Temple Pilots. I've been meaning to do a whole history on STP. I think I could probably write a much longer script on that one too if I was to redo it down the road. But I was really proud of that STP video. That's a band I grew up listening to and one of my favorite bands from that period. And then finally, to wrap up the year, I loved doing the video, the story on Everclear. It was a band that people had requested for about two years and I finally was able to get around to doing it. And then this is another band I love, which is Social Distortion. So that's probably my favorite topics I did this year. I would love to know from you guys, what were your favorite topics and what do you want to see more of in 2024? So I want to thank everybody for the journey so far. We're almost at half a million subs. It's kind of unreal that people even watch my videos, but um, I hope people enjoy them and maybe it takes you away from whatever's going on in your daily life and gives you some joy and uh, happiness. And I want to wish everybody a happy new year. Hope you guys had a great holidays and we'll see you in 2024 on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.